Okay, so this is the heart. And we're going to have two heart models on your test. This is a smaller of the two. Um, there are several structures to be able to identify. We'll start off um, with orienting yourself with the front versus that of the back. Uh, on the front, uh, there are, you'll find right here this large structure sticking out here. This, of course, is the pulmonary trunk, which then separates to form the pulmonary arteries. Uh, so there's one here and then there's one coming out back here. Um, behind the pulmonary trunk is this structure right here, which is the aorta, um, where the aorta actually separates into an ascending aorta, an aortic arch, a descending aorta. And then the descending aorta turns into the abdominal aorta, but don't worry about that. Um, now, off of the aorta, you have these three arteries coming off. The first one is the brachiocephalic, followed by the uh, common carotid on the left side, and then the subclavian on the left side. On the right side? No, on the left. Oh, oh, that's what you're saying. It's on the left side of the body. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. Now, uh, the tip of the heart is called the apex, and the heart has four chambers. It has ventricles and atriums. The atriums are in these smaller areas here. The ventricles are in these larger areas here. Now, the atrium has kind of a, a small um, area of tissue that literally a flap of tissue that covers over top of it. And so this area here is called the auricle. And you'll have one on the left side and then of course one on the right side. And that's this right here, this little flap of tissue there. Now the ventricles are separated by fat, this fatty tissue here. And so you can see that there's an area in between the ventricles right here. And then on the back, you can actually see there's another area that separates the two ventricles right here. So the left ventricle starts here and goes all the way around until it gets here. And then the right end ventricle comes from here and goes all the way around until it gets here. Now the reason it's important for you to be able to identify where these separations between the ventricles occur is because there are blood vessels right here that run in between the ventricles. So this blood vessel here is called the anterior interventricular artery, whereas this one, would, which would be considered the anterior interventricular vein, is better known as the great cardiac vein. Both of these run in between the ventricles here. Now, if we flip it over to the back, you'll see that they, there's another set that runs in between the ventricles here. And these are the posterior interventricular. This is the posterior interventricular artery, and this is what would be considered the posterior interventricular vein. But this also, like the great cardiac vein, does not go by that name. This one goes by the name middle cardiac vein. So that's what that is. Now, all the veins actually will run together and then come together at this one spot here called the coronary sinus. And that's what that is, that large bulbous structure right there is the coronary sinus. Now, if we turn this back over, you'll see that the um, artery coming up here actually curves around and goes this way. You see that? That's the circumflex artery right there. You'll also see that it kind of goes up this way and then goes behind the pulmonary trunk and then comes out this way. Well, this is the coronary artery, right here and here, coronary artery. And it goes around and comes this way. This would be the right coronary and this would be the left coronary. Now, here you see that there's these two openings here and here. These are actually going to be emptying into the left atrium. These are your pulmonary veins, whereas this and this will be actually emptying into the right atrium, and this is your superior and inferior vena cava. Now if we open this up like so, you can now see the atriums and the ventricles. Again, here's an atrium, here are the ventricles. If you look at the muscle here, which is known as the myocardium, you can actually see that it is thicker on this side than it is on this side. 
that tells us that this is the left ventricle, whereas this is the right ventricle. So this structure here, separating the two ventricles, is actually called the interventricular septum. Here we have the tricuspid, I'm sorry, the bicuspid here, and on this side uh, would be the tricuspid. Here we have the aortic semilunar valve, and then um, um, on this side here is the pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay. Now, you can see that there are these little string-like structures coming down. Those would be the chordae tendinae, which then attach to what are called papillary muscles, which then pull on the chordae tendon to open up the flaps. Then you see this area here called the trabeculae carnae, which is a kind of a kind of a network of of tissue at the bottom of the ventricles. Now. These structures here uh, are clear and visible on this model, uh, but there are additional uh, structures I want to identify on the other model. One other structure I want to talk about is this structure here that connects the aorta with the pulmonary trunk or the um, pulmonary artery here, and that is the ligamentum arteriosum, and that's what that is there. All right, so we'll stop there, and then we'll switch to the, to the